Here is Peter, as he said, in the boat. He's developing a relationship with Jesus Christ. It starts off that he thinks he knows that his way is better than anybody else's way, that, that people really don't know what they're talking about. And here comes this man, Jesus. He's a carpenter. What in the world does a carpenter know about me and about what I do? And, and here, Jesus is preaching the truth and Peter is oblivious to the truth that's being preached. Jesus says, now, Peter, I want you to cast your net. Just cast it. Cast it out. I, I don't know if it was the right side of that to just, he just cast out a net. It's not really. Amen. And, and, and then a whole bunch of fish comes in and he realizes there is somebody who knows more than I do. There's someone who can solve my problems because I've toiled all that I can toil on my own. And let me tell you, if you're trying to live your life on your own, you're going to have a long, hard work with not much fruit in it. Fish starts piling in. The, the, the net, you can say it typifies, in this case, your life and and you know what? It's filling up. The blessings of God are coming in. But you know, the net's breaking. My life's breaking. And, and I think you can see this throughout Peter's life because we're going to look at Peter for a minute and how in his living, he has his ups and his downs, his ups and his downs. And let me tell you where the ups and downs come from. Sometimes it's because you've lost your first love. And you've forgotten what it is to actually trust Him. So many times it's because you gave Him part of your life, but you didn't give it all. You, you're holding back something. Eddie made mention of it. You hold back part of your life. We say, yeah, Jesus, you're my Lord. But basically, we've said, listen, just take care of my sins, but let me continue doing things the way I want to do it. Let me cover it up so that it looks pretty. I know you've never done that. It's just me, but you cover it up to make it look pretty. And yet the fish are falling out because the net are breaking. The blessings come, but we're losing the blessings. They're falling off to the side because... We still have a part in our life we're saying, you know what? I still want to do it my way. I still want to do it my way. We have these close encounters of the God kind. When God all of a sudden manifests himself and we experience the glory of God. And, and one minute we're up, the next minute we're down. That's Peter. Peter's up. Peter is down. I believe that's what Simon means, up and down. We find in Matthew 16, verse 13, that Jesus came, and, and here uh, he begins to ask a question. Now, Jesus knows the answer. Let me ask, tell you something. If, if Jesus appears to you and asks you a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. You're just about to be set up for something, or he's trying to probe something in your life and he asks him a question who do people say that I am and some people say Elias some people say Jeremiah well who do you say I am and then Simon Peter gets a revelation in verse 16 and he says you are the Christ the son of the living God Jesus said oh Jesus flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. The Spirit of God has opened up the mind of your understanding. Now listen. So many times we get that revelation of God and, and we're on the high. But it's really temporary because we're lacking the roots. We're lacking something in our lives because right after that, in his high, he begins to think he's all that and he comes to Jesus and he says, Jesus, you will not die on the cross. And Jesus turns around and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. And it's like, 
you're up one moment and you get smacked and you're right back down where you started and you don't know what's up you don't know what's down something knocks you down Sometimes it's because you thought you were much better than other people. That you got a revelation that nobody else got and that somehow you were the anointed one. And then no sooner than that happens, pride comes in and you're smacked right back down to your beginning part. Are you with me? This is Peter. Peter's hot and then he's, he's hot down upside down inside out John 13 6 he goes on Jesus comes to Peter and Peter says to him Lord you're going to wash my feet Jesus is serving Jesus knows what he's doing he's washing the disciples feet basically because no one else would and uh, most of us think that we're too good to do it ourselves and so Jesus wraps himself with a with with a towel and and he comes and he begins to wash people's feet and Peter's there he knows his his turn is coming up and and uh, he thinks he's he's you know not good enough for Jesus to minister to him and he says Jesus don't don't wash my feet Jesus answered in verse 7 of John chapter 13 and says what I do you do not know now but you'll know hereafter. G Peter responded, you will never wash my feet. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you have no part of me. And so here we find Peter again. He's, he's putting his foot in his mouth. He's messing up again. He's trying to get things right. You know, I'm trying to do it right. And it seems like the more I try to do it right, the more I find myself doing it all wrong. What's wrong with me? And so Peter tries to make up for it. You know, the pendulum swings one way, then he goes all the way the other way. And he says, okay, Jesus, wash everything. And, Peter, and Jesus responds, says, Peter, shut up. It's enough that I wash your feet. Would you get down on an even keel for a minute? Stop trying to be all that. Stop trying to ride your highs. Because as soon as you're on your highs, you're going to find yourself way low. Anybody been there? Look at the person next to you and say, is he talking to you? and down, up and down. The life is up, down. First we're up with God, then we're down with God. We're hot with God, we're cold with God. We don't know whether we're coming or going. That's Peter. Do we have any Peters here? Peter was hard-headed. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, we're working. Amen. <laughs> That is a Peter. His name is Peter. But I don't say you're hard-headed. Praise God. Praise God. There had to be a Peter in here, hadn't there? In Matthew 26, verse 51, Behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand, drew the sword. This is Peter. He drew the sword and struck the servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Peter had just said, listen, I'm going to die for you. And he grabs, he grabs the sword. He says, I'm going to die for you, Peter. I don't care what's going to happen. And he slices and he misses. Can you imagine? How can you miss? He can't even work a sword right, you know? I mean, the head's right here. At least if you hit the ear, you should have got the rest of the body. But he didn't even hit the body. He just got the ear. Are you listening? Peter's trying to show, I'm going to die for you. And, and, and he's still messing up. Jesus says, listen, if you're going to live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Put it up. What are you doing? Jesus takes the ear and puts it back on the, the person's head and attaches itself again. Peter, you're messed up. You don't know what you do. And what does Peter do? He runs. I mean, he's out of here. 
I, I don't know. I think after so many times, he's just going, why try? It seems like I, I'm, not, I, I'm not getting anything right. I'm trying to do something right. I, I, don't, I don't seem to make it work. I, I can't connect the dots here. I can't connect the dots of my life. I, I think I'm doing right, and the next thing Jesus says is I'm doing wrong. And, and then when I try to fix what I'm doing wrong, he says you're still doing it wrong, trying to make it right. Peter, he's real. He's, he's touchable. We can relate to Peter. Peter's a real man who's human. We're all human, are we not? Peter's trying to do it right. Further on down, Peter again, he's, Jesus is, uh, has already been, been uh, betrayed. Uh, you know, in the garden, Peter tried, he, he's left, and, and now he's just looking. He's on the outskirt. He, he's just looking outside in. And there's so many Christians today who have messed up so much. They're just on the outside now, and they're just looking in. They're just looking inside to see what's happening. And, and, and you know, can I even do it? But listen, you, you don't escape by standing on the outside. Because if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it doesn't matter if you're inside, outside, you're still part of Jesus Christ. And someone's still going to find out and they're going to challenge you. They're going to challenge your faith. Have you been challenged yet? Am I talking to some Peters this morning? Are you on the outside because of what someone else did, some other Christian did to you? Are you on the outside? Are you outside because your, your parents don't seem to line and connect up the dots and so you decided to stand on the outside and just kind of look thinking that somehow if you're on the outside, you'll be all right. Are you on the outside this morning just looking in? Are you on the outside because your life has been a series of ups and downs and ins and outs and you don't know if you're coming and going? Are you on the outside? Are you on the outside? Peter's on the outside. He's looking in, but you know, he's trying to connect again with the old way of living. He's trying to connect again with, with going back to, to fishing, so to speak. Going back to the old way, his old way of acting. And, and in verse 69, he's without the palace. A damsel came unto him saying, uh, weren't you a Jesus of Galilee? Weren't you a Christian? He said, no, before the mall saying, I don't know what you're talking about. When he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, this fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied, but this time with an oath, he cursed. Man, we don't even go back to the old way of talking. And he cursed. And I said, I don't know the man. And after a while, they came unto him that stood by and said to be surely you are also one of them your speech betrays you and then he began to curse and to swear and said i don't know the man and immediately the cock crew crew crow it says crew here okay do you have a problem with the author of the new living translation talk to him i'm reading hey who's preaching here anyway is it me or you See, you're, you're, you think you're up. Goodness gracious, you're back down again, aren't you? And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said to him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. And he went out bitterly. Let me just say, just for your understanding, it was not a rooster. I know we sing all the movies and we hear the... But chickens were classified as a dirty fowl. And to make sure it did not get into the temple, they put a law that said no chickens in Jerusalem. There was a crier that cried out at three in the morning said, that was saying, wake up, it's time to serve. And they called it the cock that crowed because when do cocks crow 
He was a crier. He was the temple crier. And when the temple crier went to the third gate and called it out again three times, that was the cock the crow. Okay? You learning something? Amen. So we can throw the chickens out and have them for dinner. <laughs> now listen. He wept bitterly. Say bitterly. Now, why, why did he weep so bitterly? I mean, he's been up, he's been down, he's denied Jesus again, and, and he's realizing, oh my goodness, I have really flubbed up. I mean, I, I've messed up before, but this time I have gone all the way. But he went beyond that. Now listen, because he's bringing back to remembrance what Jesus said way before if you deny me before men I will deny you before God can you imagine the guy that said just hours before I will die for you has just now rejected the son and he's brought to remembrance that Jesus says, I will deny you before the Father. Can you imagine the thoughts going through his head? Have I committed a sin that can no longer be fixed? And so many people deal with that. Have I committed that unpardonable sin? out in the outside you're not even living for Christ anymore and you think you're alright what's that song about grace the one that you sang this morning would you say that no just say The words, the phrase was grace that I haven't or I don't deserve and grace that I haven't earned or worked for. And, and where do we do, where do we find that grace? What, what's in that grace in the throne? Boldly come to get. It says to boldly come in a time of need as we seek that God may give us that mercy and that grace. There's that mercy, isn't there? If anything, today, the resurrection day, God is speaking to you, to saying to you this morning, I've got mercy. There's still mercy. Everybody say mercy. It has to come from a heart that's bitterly weeping, a broken heart. Because if you're holding on to everything, you don't let your heart be broken. Then you're just going to have a life of ups and downs. And ups and downs. Thinking you've made it. And then finding yourself on the floor again. It took a broken Savior to fill a, fix a broken life in a broken world. Have you figured out you're broke? Jesus was resurrected from the dead. The temple's veil was broken from the top to the bottom, torn from heaven to earth, saying, I no longer will deal with laws that are written on cold stone, unfeeling, judgmental. Now I'm going to work with hearts that are open and tender. I will write my laws in their heart, a heart, a, a, a law of love that goes beyond the letter. I will reach into people's lives, lives whose nets are broken, the blessings that God is trying to send your way. You get it one moment to the next moment you're losing it. You're going up one day and the next day you're back down on the floor. You're saying, God, 
What do I have to do? Jesus is still the answer. But it has to be an answer that comes to you from a place where you are broken. Because listen, if you're not broken, you're not ready to receive. You'll still try to do it your way one day and go back to God's way the next day. You'll find yourselves filled with the fish, the blessing of his presence, the blessing of who he is. And the next moment you're going to find yourself on the floor, knees saying, oh Jesus, you're the one who's Lord because my fish nets are breaking and I'm losing the blessings. Can you relate to Peter? You have to be broken. I like what Jesus said. He said in Mark chapter 16, verse 7, go, go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before, this is the angel speaking, that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said to you. The angels speaking on behalf of Jesus, as he appeared to the women, he said, go tell the disciples and oh, wait with Make sure you tell Peter too. He didn't say John. He didn't say Thomas who doubted. He said Peter because Jesus had already prayed for Peter, hoping and praying that his faith would not fail him. And so he just wanted to make sure, Peter, you're not cast out. You're not broken. You're not destroyed. There's a hope. There's a resurrection. You have died to yourself. And listen, when you die, you're going to be raised again. There is hope for you. Come on, you can say, thank you, Jesus. To the Peters of this world, Jesus is sending angels saying, listen to me. Are you listening to me? I am, I am coming to talk to you, Peter. I haven't forgotten you. You're not cast out. You're not rejected. He came to terms with what's inside of him. And Jesus wants to comfort him at that time and says, No, I'm not going to leave you. I don't pick up and leave when you are on your downside. Aren't you glad? I said, aren't you glad? Even, even so, Peter tells the rest of the disciples, he says, I go fishing. You know, that's what we all do, don't we? Why do we go fishing? We get away from it all. So even after he's gotten the message, he still says, you know what? I'm going fishing. I'm going back because I know my track record. I'm up one moment. I'm down the next. I'm good one day. And even when I try to do good, I end up sticking my foot in my mouth. And so, you know what? I, let me just go back to fishing. Remember where he toiled all night and didn't get anything? Remember? So he goes back fishing. So what did he get? Nothing. <laughs> You know, you go back to the old, old lifestyle. You know, the old lifestyle is still old, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Praise God. You get some curdled milk and you, you open it up. It's still curdled the next day and it doesn't change. It's still sour. What are you going to go to? You think there's something better in the old life? No, there's more toil with no fruit in it it's not worth it I don't care what someone has done I don't care how slighted you think you are or how you think no one really cares for you or, you know the pastor didn't call you or didn't shake your hand this morning or the friend that you called a friend didn't act like the friend does it really matter and there's Jesus is on the seashore, and he's cooking. And he calls out and he says, Did you catch anything in the old lifestyle? <laughs> he 
and said, no, cast the net on the other side. Can you imagine? Now listen, they're, they're in the water. He's on the seashore. What can Jesus see? Everything. He's a carpenter. What does he know? Everything. The carpenter built the worlds and all that's in it. He framed it with the word. He knows everything. He knows the ins. He knows the outs. He knows your inside and the outside. And when they said that, they said, oh, it's the master. Now that net got filled up and it did not break. I said it did not break. Is this your year of fulfillment where the blessings stopped flowing out of your fingers? Where finally you got it covered? Where finally the blessings come and it did not break? I said today is your day of resurrection where your blessings can be fulfilled and where there's no more breakage in your life. Yours is the decision. Jesus called out and said, Come! Peter didn't wait. He dove in the water. And when they pulled in the net, they pulled on so much fish. And yet the Bible says the net did not break. Is your life broken? Let him come. This Peter, who was up one day, down the next, and could not figure out what was up and down, he tried to preach, and it didn't do such a good job at that, misunderstood the very reason why Jesus was come, didn't understand how to express it. He knew some truths and was flubbing it up on the next moment. This Peter found Jesus. And then he found the Holy Ghost. I said, then he found the Holy Ghost. Because on the day of Pentecost, seven weeks after Jesus' resurrection, the believers were meeting together in one place and suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm in the skies above them and it filled the house where they were meeting and then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled each and every one of them. Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues and languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost of the living Christ is the answer that will build a fire inside of you that will cause your ups to be normal and there will be no downs in it. It's about coming back to your first love and getting filled again with the Holy Ghost and say, this is the reason I live. This is the reason I preach. This is the reason why I exist. I exist because Jesus died for me. I exist because he was raised from the dead for me and with his Holy Ghost I am ready to go and this time not stop and he preached come on give a shout to Jesus you got some Holy Ghost in you Verse 15, he begins preaching and says, Some of you are saying these people are drunk. It isn't true. It's much too early for that. People don't get drunk by 9 o'clock in the morning. No, what you see this morning was predicted centuries ago by the prophet Joel. The last days God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Verse 22, people of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus of Nazareth by doing wonderful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But you follow God's prearranged plan with the help of lawless Gentiles. You nailed him to the cross and murdered him. However, God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life again, for death could not keep him 
in his crib. May I say something? Would you get, get, your, get your, your mind arrested right now? We nailed him to the cross. We murdered him. We were the lawless Gentiles or the religious ones. When we placed our sins on his body. And I pray this morning that your response to what you have done, what I have done, what we have done corporately to Jesus will respond the same way that they responded. Peter's words convicted them deeply and they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must turn from your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, your children, even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Would you stand? Are you a Peter this morning? Are you a Peter that you said, you know what, I'm up one day and I'm down the next. I'm hot for God one moment and sticking my foot in my mouth the next. Am I the one that says, yes, Jesus Christ is, is my Lord, but when I am among those who are not saved, I end up cursing and saying, no, I am not one of them, yet they know better. Are you here this morning and you're saying, Pastor, I am that one that ran away from God. I have denied him. By my actions, I have denied him. I said Jesus Christ was my Lord, but when push came to shove, when something terrible happened, I ran and I left him while he got crucified for me. This is a day of resurrection. This is a day where you can say, you know what? I've been dead in what I've been doing, but today I want to come back to life. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. This is your opportunity this morning. Are you looking at your life and you're saying, oh my goodness, I think I want to go back to fishing, going back to my old way of living. Are you looking at your life and saying, God, I am run out of answers and now I'm broken. And like the potter's field that was filled with the pieces of broken pots, you need the potter to come and put you back together again. If you're here this morning and you're saying, my God, I am tired of being up one day and down the next, but today I am making my decision to follow Jesus with my whole heart. You need to rededicate your life or give your life for the first time to Jesus. Would you raise your hand right where you're at, please? We have a hand over here. Anybody else? Come on, give a, you give a praise. Are you here this morning and your life is a wreck and you're needing God to begin to mend the nets so that the blessings don't fall? from within your broken nets. You need a net fixer. Are you here this morning? Are you saved? Are you going to heaven? Are you needing Jesus? Again, I'm saying if that's you, raise your hand. If you need to rededicate your life, if you need to get your life back, if you've been thinking about going back to fishing, if you've been one way in church, a different way at work, and you need to say, this is it, God, I am finished with this. I am broken, and I'll need you to fix me. I don't care if this is the 50th time you've done it. Why don't you make this the right time? If that's you, raise your hand and say, that's me. We've got another hand. Another hand. we got hands over here. Another hand. Another hand. Another hand. Come on. Come on, give them a praise. 
Come on, give God a shout. This is resurrection morning. This is resurrection morning. Someone said, well, I, I think I should have done it when everybody else raised their hand. Maybe he wasn't talking to me. I'm talking to you. Jesus is talking to you. Say, so you're not Jesus. No, I didn't say I was Jesus, but I speak on his behalf as an ambassador. Don't you remember that Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, before the priest crows, you're going to deny me three times. He knows what, you're, what you've done. He knows where you've been. You're not hiding from him. He knew you were going to do it before you did it. Would you be honest with yourself and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to make this today. Would you raise your hand, please? If you haven't raised it yet. put you on the spot because I'm going to make you, I want to see if you really believed what you said or whether you were just acting. I say that nicely. Would you, all of you that raise your hands, slip out of your seat and come right up front. Come on, give them a hand. Come on. This is important that you do it, let me tell you. Because it will change something in your heart. Bring a friend if you need to. Do it together as a family if you have to. Do we have family members that need to stand by? Then stand by your family member. Amen. Amen. Family members are coming up too. Amen. Praise God. Great job. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because listen. Amen. It's wonderful. Jesus said to Peter, he said, come, follow me, didn't he? Does that mean he had to get out of his boat and, and, and go forward? What you just did is you got out of the boat of comfort. You got out of the boat of shame. You got out of the boat of what other people might think about you. Because listen, I don't care what they think about you. It's what Jesus thinks about you that's important. Because for sure, the moment you take a step for Jesus, somebody's going to think, start speaking about you. Oh, yeah, right. Like you did last time. I remember you. I remember what you were. Surely they remembered who Peter was. Surely they remember what Peter had done. Listen to me. Surely even Peter knew what he had done. Jesus didn't care. Jesus cared that Peter was willing to step forward and let the past be past and let today be the future. Listen, Jesus died. He went to the lowest parts of hell God the Father, by the power of His Holy Spirit, stuck His hand to deeper parts than you will ever be. Because He carried the sins of the world, all you carry are your own. And the Holy Spirit came and grabbed hold of Jesus and He yanked Him back out with all power, might, and dominion said it is not only finished because Jesus said so it is finished because I have the keys of death, hell and the grave and sins are no more say with me today say father come on it's your father say daddy I messed up I sinned 
but Jesus on the cross died for me. I placed my sins on Jesus and he paid for it so that I may be forgiven. Today, I cement it. No more wishy-washy. No more up and down. Today, I settle it. Jesus, you are my Lord, my Savior, my forgiver, my helper in a time of need. My mercy that I receive by grace in the name of Jesus. By grace in the name of Jesus. By grace. It is a gift of God. Say, I am forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. I am forgiven. Come on, say it like you mean it. I am forgiven. Do you believe it? Do you really believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Clean. You're white as snow. I don't even know what you did. And Jesus doesn't know either because it's washed. You're brand new. Say, I'm brand new. You are brand new. You need to know that. Amen. All the way. All the way. All the way. Are you all the way? All the way. All the way. Say, Father. Come on, say, Father, I ask for the Holy Ghost to come and to fill this temple with the Holy Spirit. Fill me. I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit right now. Thank you, Father. The gift is mine in Jesus' name.